Who doesn't like a combination of medical doctor plus accent plus science? Well, I'm here to introduce you to Dr. Brad Stanfield, the man of the hour, or at least the next several minutes. Well, I don't know about you, but with all the science whirring around on screen, it might be nice to have someone check into a few of the studies presented by Dr. Stanfield. And you guessed it, that person is moi. So if you're interested in learning a bit on curcumin and its impact on osteoarthritis, diabetes, and weight loss, as well as a checkup on Dr. Stanfield's work, then here we go. The first topic of interest is Dr. Stanfield's discussions of osteoarthritis, wherein he claims that the science indicates some benefit of curcumin, but not only that, curcumin may outperform pharmaceutical drugs. Let's have a listen to that New Zealand accent. Let's start with arthritis. In 2019, a randomized clinical trial was done looking at patients with knee arthritis and half of the people were assigned 500 milligrams of curcumin and the other half were given diclofenac, which is an anti-inflammatory. What they found is that people who were receiving curcumin showed similar improvements in their pain compared to diclofenac. But here's the really exciting part. The adverse effects were significantly less in the curcumin group, which led the authors to conclude that curcumin has a similar effect to diclofenac, but it demonstrated better tolerance among patients with knee arthritis. This is a massive deal because there are big problems with diclofenac and other anti-inflammatories such as ibuprofen, because people who have got osteoarthritis, they're generally older, and giving anti-inflammatories to those older people, it's rife with issues. We have to be very careful that we don't cause problems with the kidneys and we don't cause stomach bleeding. It's a fine balance that we have to strike. So if we've got another molecule such as curcumin, which gives these positive benefits to arthritis, but without the downsides, that is massive. Okay, a lot to unpack here already. Dr. Stanfield mentions a study wherein the researchers compare an anti-inflammatory versus curcumin. Now, I have to admit, I'm a bit of a stickler for actually showing and explaining the data, which few people seem to care a whole lot about. For example, showing the abstract of a study and highlighting the key sentence isn't my style, but I recognize it's many other people's, so to each their own. However, I'd like to point out some additional information from this study. First, curcumin reduced some pain measurements by 40% after two weeks, but the effects strengthened over time to a 70% reduction after four weeks. So you can see that here with lower numbers being lower pain. So this means the curcumin effect isn't necessarily immediate, but will take several weeks to be evident. Second, the lack of side effects is really notable. I realize Dr. Stanfield mentioned it, but the most common side effects avoided were stomach pain, farting, and diarrhea, all to the benefit of curcumin. So this is all to say that Dr. Stanfield is right. Curcumin really seems to have quite the benefit equal to an anti-inflammatory, but without the stomach issues. But just keep in mind that the effects take some time to really appear. So he has more to say on the topic. So there's something else that I wanted to bring up that I found really intriguing. But we've only looked at one trial. What happens when we combine the relevant clinical data together? Well, that's exactly what this 2021 meta-analysis published in the British Medical Journal did. It combined 10 studies, and in all of those studies, there was an improvement in pain and function with turmeric therapy. And once again, in three studies comparing turmeric to non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, there was no difference in outcome pain scores. And in all of the studies, there were no significant adverse effects fix in the turmeric therapy group. We're increasing the evidence in favor of curcumin here with 10 studies grouped together into what Dr. Stanfield calls a meta-analysis. It isn't quite presented like a standard meta-analysis, but either way, it's great evidence. This review also corroborates the first study that we looked into, small effects of curcumin for arthritis in the first few weeks with the positive effect improving over the coming weeks until they top out at about a month and then persist. Now, 
I did a bit of digging into some of the studies included and ran across this one where they had a number of conditions, including people put on curcumin, as well as people put on glucosamine or a combination of curcumin and glucosamine. The results again indicate a benefit of curcumin as seen here. The lower number at 42 days is reduced pain. The same results were seen with glucosamine indicating a similar effect. However, what really surprised me was the combination treatment, glucosamine plus curcumin. You'd expect an even greater improvement, or at least a similar improvement, but no. There was a worse effect, meaning the combination treatment did improve symptoms, but did not improve them as much as either treatment alone. This suggests to me that there is some form of interference of taking both supplements. This isn't something I would expect Dr. Stanfield to point out, but when I saw it, I thought I might as well make that addition, and certainly something else to investigate further in the future. But coming back to the main point, Dr. Stanfield is absolutely right about curcumin consumption and its helpfulness in managing osteoarthritis, and has added benefits compared to pharmaceutical drugs. Moving on to diabetes, we do have a double-blind placebo-controlled trial that was published in 2013, and it shows that for type 2 diabetic patients, there were decreases in fasting blood sugar levels and HbA1c levels. There was also a suggestion that it improved insulin resistance. And when analyzing trials like this, we want to make sure that we're comparing apples to apples, so we always have a look at the baseline data of both groups. And we can see that both in the placebo and the curcumin group, there was no significant difference at the start of the trial. On to diabetes. He mentions a study that indicates an improvement in blood sugar levels, HbA1c, which is a longer term marker of blood sugar levels, and insulin resistance, all of which we generally want to reduce. I really like the fact that he mentions the and points out about comparing apples to apples and shows the baseline data, which is a critical part in study analysis. That said, again, I'm just not a fan of highlighting sentences because it misses some points from actually showing the data. For example, in this study, he highlights that fasting blood sugar drops with curcumin consumption, but there's more to that story because looking at the data, we can see that curcumin is compared against a placebo group. Unfortunately, the statistics compare the end results only. So after consumption of curcumin or after consumption of placebo, a fake treatment, what were the results? Well, we see here that curcumin led to a drop in blood sugar, but the statistical analysis doesn't look at the before and after. It only looks at the after and compares against the placebos after or post-intervention. Yet, what will you notice if you also look at the placebo? Although the statistical analysis isn't set up to pick it up, there seems to be a slight drop in blood sugar in the placebo group as well. So if we aren't careful, we can attribute effects to curcumin that are actually merely a placebo effect. That all said, I still believe there is a curcumin effect, but my point is some of the effect could be a placebo driven meaning simply consuming something and believing it will help can have an effect. Unfortunately, the researchers of this study fail to indicate the proper statistical approach, which would be nice to point out, and you don't get that if you simply highlight sentences from the abstract. But I digress. I still agree with Dr. Stanfield, curcumin improves blood sugar and HbA1c, which is evident considering the placebo experienced a worsening and the curcumin group experienced an improvement, which also holds true for insulin resistance measures like HOMA IR. But something else that we have to ask ourselves is how much does curcumin help lower blood sugar? So that trial is very encouraging, but I do want to exercise caution here. In 2019, there was a massive review looking at curcumin and its effects on type 2 diabetes, but this review had to be retracted due to problems with the analysis. Luckily though, we've got a separate review that was published this year in 2021. And once again, we could see improvements in markers of diabetes. And while that data on curcumin and diabetes is exciting, the differences were small and we've got very good treatments now 
for type 2 diabetics. So I do wonder what added benefit curcumin will have to type 2 diabetic people. And in my clinical practice, I certainly wouldn't rely on curcumin alone to treat type 2 diabetics. And I hope that difference makes sense. Yes, we can see a statistically significant benefit with curcumin, but the overall clinical impact is very small and we've got other treatments that work far more effectively for type 2 diabetics compared to curcumin. In this segment, he mentions some more meta-analyses as well as his impressions that curcumin may be beneficial, but the effect may be small, especially compared to other interventions like certain medications. I certainly would not deny that medications can have more robust effects, but I've been pretty impressed with curcumin. Actually, recently I did my own 10 plus study analysis of curcumin, getting into the details of its insulin resistance and blood sugar effects. And I don't think I'd be quite so quick to discount curcumin. Some of the studies I looked into showed a consistent 10% reduction in blood sugar and HbA1c after about two months consumption. Now, sure, that isn't going to reverse diabetes or anything, but it certainly lowers the burden on the body. So pairing something with few side effects like curcumin can also lead to a reduced reliance on more potent medical interventions that may have more serious side effects, thereby lowering the dose of off-target effects of drugs. To reiterate Dr. Stanfield's point, curcumin isn't potent enough to replace medication, but it offers some creative possibilities. What I do find interesting from that trial though, is the decreased weight in the female mice. So can curcumin be used to help with weight loss? We do have a large 2019 meta-analysis of human clinical trials, and it does conclude that there were small benefits seen with weight loss. And importantly, the trials concluded here were placebo controlled. So this is quite an interesting finding, and it does fit with the interventions testing program results. So if I was a woman in my late 40s and onwards, I would consider using curcumin to maintain a healthy weight, and I do look forward to reading future trials looking into this possibility. Here, I feel I need to veer off the path a bit, because while Dr. Stanfield mentions minor benefits of curcumin for blood sugar, he seems more convinced that curcumin will help with weight loss. Here's where I think the statement of minor effects is more apt. Why? Well, if we look at the meta-analysis that he cites, again, looking at the pooled effects data, we see that the total effect of 13 studies displayed with the red outline diamond, without getting too into the weeds, uh, if the diamond shifts to the left, uh, there is a weight loss effect of curcumin. And if it shifts to the right, uh, there is a weight gain effect. Obviously, it is to the left of the line, indicating a weight loss effect. So why am I complaining? Because although it was briefly mentioned, the effect is tiny. So yes, curcumin likely aids in weight loss. I even saw that in my own analysis, but if you're expecting five or 10 kilogram weight loss, you'll be waiting a long time. And by a long time, I mean, it'll never happen. The average weight loss was around a quarter of a kilogram, and the greatest weight loss was only a little over one kilogram. Additionally, I would not limit the findings to women only because while yes, one of the studies Dr. Stanfield mentions in mice did show only effects of curcumin in female mice, there are plenty of human studies that show a weight loss benefit in men as well. So I would amend the conclusion to anyone consuming curcumin will likely experience very mild weight loss regardless of sex. So overall, I think Dr. Stanfield does great work throughout the video, and I have to largely agree with him, even if my modalities are slightly different, and I think there's more to say on certain topics. However, all in all, I think he does a wonderful job. If you're interested in more on my investigations, I would highly recommend checking out my Spotlight series where I explain the science of all the top influencers, or might I recommend another video of mine that I feel would benefit you. With that, I'd love to speak with you in the future, and I'll hope to do just that. Bye.